so let us start today's session uh, in the last session we have finished with the first module okay that was related with the basic knowledge then refrigerants and followed by simple air cooling systems okay we have seen simple air cooling system then bootstrap air cooling system reduced ambient air cooling system and regenerative air cooling system okay so that we have covered in the last module okay now in this module okay if i just uh, show you the review ppt okay which i presented you uh, in the in the very first lecture okay so you can see that okay i'll i'll just share my screen okay uh, so we, we have finished with the first module okay now we are going to start with the second module okay so this first module we have already finished basic knowledge refrigerants and air refrigeration systems okay now we are starting with the second module and in that we will first starts with the vapor compression refrigeration system okay there are two system one is compression and second is absorption okay so we will start initially with the vapor compression system okay so if you just see the content we need to see uh, a simple uh, vapor compression system and we should be able to plot that on a ph and ts diagram okay we should be able to plot the processes on ph pressure versus enthalpy okay and temperature versus entropy okay pressure versus enthalpy temperature versus entropy diagram okay so we we should be able to uh, plot the various processes which are involved in the simple compression refrigeration system on the ph and ts diagram then we need to do the analysis of the simple cycle okay analysis see meaning of analysis is to calculate the cop okay because see Uh, it is not an engine okay so so this system will not produce a power it will consume a power so when it will consume a power we will calculate cop okay then we need to determine we need to just see which are the factors which affect the performance of the cycle okay by increasing some parameter by decreasing some parameter what happens with the cop okay that we need to check okay then we need to see the actual cycle okay so how the ideal cycle and how the actual cycle is going to look like okay that we need to see and at the last okay we will solve the numerical based on the vapor compression refrigeration system by using ph chart ph chart pen pressure enthalpy chart and refrigerant table okay so this is this is required right so th th this is a purpose to go for this 2.1 okay so in, in this module okay it is expected to have a uh, one compulsory numerical okay based on simple vapor compression refrigeration system okay one compulsory numerical on vcrs okay that is called as vapor compression refrigeration system okay so you should be all of you should be able to solve a numerical based on the uh, simple vapor compression refrigeration system okay and after that we will go with the vapor absorption refrigeration system okay so th this is 2.2 okay so when you talk about this module okay so you, you can see the maximum marks they are allotted for this particular module okay so maximum marks okay uh, that, that is approximately 24 marks are, are are allotted for this module so you can uh, see the important importance of this particular content okay what we'll see in the application okay so this is very important module okay so now let us starts with vapor compression refrigeration system now now let us start with that okay so see all of you uh, we have taken one practical okay on on vapor compression test week okay this is the first practical which we have started vapor compression test week okay so during that practical i have i have explained you the entire system how the system work okay and uh, at the end of that practical session we have calculated the theoretical and actual cop okay we have calculated the theoretical and actual cop okay so same cycle okay now we will see with different inlet conditions okay so so now now let us see the the uh, schematic diagram for this particular cycle okay so this is basically the vapor compression refrigeration system okay this is a vapor compression refrigeration system so as you can see on the screen okay all of you as you can as you can see on the screen 
okay what we have we have initially the compressor okay so this is a compressor right so 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 the cycle will start okay uh, from the compressor okay so you can check okay so the, the, this this one okay this point it is nothing but inlet to the compressor this is the inlet to the compressor so inlet to the compressor is point number 1 okay so in the compressor what happens it gets compressed okay so the the compressed okay we will get it at point number 2 okay one is the inlet to the compressor two is the exit to the compressor once it is getting out of the compressor where it goes it goes to the condenser this is a condenser okay so from condenser okay it will comes out at point number 3 okay so let me plot this as point number 3 okay so from the condenser it will comes out at point number 3 okay from the condenser it goes to what it goes to the expansion wall you can see this is the expansion wall so from the expansion wall it comes out at point number 4 okay it will comes out at a point number 4 right if you want more specifically okay I'll, i'll just mention that point here okay this is point number 4 okay this is the point number 4 so simple we have one compressor which will compress the fluid okay then we have we have condenser which will condense the fluid okay after that we have expansion device okay uh, and in the practical we have use it as a capillary tube okay so expansion wall or we can call this as a capillary tube Okay, so this is nothing but a capillary tube. Okay, expansion wall, or we can call this as the capillary. Tube. Okay, and after that, it goes to evaporator. So see what happens in a compressor. All of you know. Okay, in the compressor, okay, the working fluid gets compressed. Okay, so what what do you mean by compressed? Okay, its pressure increases, its temperature increases. Okay, so that is what occurs in a compression. Okay, so that is done in a compressor. okay so once it is getting out of the compressor it is supplied to what it is supplied to the condenser so this is a condenser so in condenser what happens okay in the condenser working fluid gets condensed okay working fluid gets condensed okay so what happen is okay so the working fluid okay it gets converted into saturated liquid okay so here it might be vapor okay but at point number 3 what we are getting is a saturated liquid okay what we are getting is a saturated liquid so at point number 3 you see what is the purpose of the condenser the purpose of the condenser is to condense it okay so this high pressure high temperature air gets condensed okay working fluid working fluid gets condensed at point number 3 now once it is get condensed it is supplied to what expansion device where it gets expa expanded okay the the, the 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 we are we are using a capillary tube for the expansion okay so expansion wall or expansion device which we are using is a capillary tube okay so during in the capillary tube it gets expanded further it is it is supplied to the evaporator further it is supplied to what it is supplied to the evaporator okay so what happens uh, the, the refrigerant which is present inside a evaporator coil it is going to abstract the heat uh, from the food atoms as a result the refrigerant gets evaporated okay so refrigerant gets evaporated and further it is supplied to the compressor okay so this is how it works on a closed system it's a closed cycle okay so first it gets compressed then it get condensed okay then it gets expanded and further it is it gets evaporated okay and this is how the cycle repeats okay so this is basically the closed system okay so is there any problem with this one all of you yes is there any problem no sir okay now see all of you the, the, this cycle this cycle will depends upon what inlet condition you have okay now see let, let us starts with the process okay let us start plotting the process on ph and a ts diagram okay let us plot the process on ph and ts diagram now you can see the ph diagram it's a pressure enthalpy diagram okay now see let let us see about the process 1 2 2 1 2 2 1 during 1 2 2 okay now see during 1 2 2 what happens okay compression occurs and that compression it's isentropic okay whatever the compression 
that occurs in a compressor, it's a isentropy. Okay. So let, let us see the point number one. We, we are on a pH diagram. Okay. Let us see the point number one. So from point number one, okay, we will compress it to point number two. We will compress it to point number two. Now see, when you when you see the location of point number two, okay, when you see the location of point number two, it is lying on a saturated, it is lying on a saturated vapor line. Okay, you can see this point, point number two, where it is lying. It is lying on this part of the curve. Okay, so whenever any point it is it is lying on the right hand part of the dome. Okay, see in the, all of you see this one. Okay, see we have plot we have plot the process. Okay, in the thermodynamics on a TS diagram. Okay, same we are doing. You see, we, if you are not able to recall, I, I will just show you somewhat shape we have plotted, right? And in, in this shape, we have uh, plotted the Rankine cycle. We have plotted the Rankine cycle. So see, if any point is lying on the right-hand side of the curve, okay, if, if you want, I'll just erase it, okay? Okay, I, I'll show it by different color, okay? So this, this, this is the left-hand part, okay? And I will show you the right-hand side of the part, okay? And let us see, this is the right-hand side of the part. All of you see this. This is the right-hand side of the part. Okay, so if any point, any point is lying on the green region, okay, then it is to be, it is said to be dry saturated. It, it is said to be dry saturated. Okay, because see what happens, what happens? See, on, on the left-hand side, on the left-hand side, okay, it's a liquid. If you want, I'll just show you that. See, on the left-hand side, it's a liquid. Okay, see here, here it's a liquid. Okay, here it's a vapor. Okay, here it's a vapor. And what do you have inside? It's a mixture of liquid plus vapor. What do you have inside this dome? It's a mixture of liquid plus vapor. See, on, on the left-hand side, we have a complete liquid. It's a pure liquid, okay? On the right-hand side, when you, when you see here, what we have? We have complete vapor, okay? So inside this, what do we have? We have a mixture of liquid plus vapor, okay? And that we used to call it as weight stream. Okay, so inside this dome shape, what we have? We have a weight stream. Simple. See, we have water here. See, we have water here. Okay. So on the left-hand side, we have water. That is a liquid. Okay. Now, when you come inside, that means when you heat the water, when you heat this water, that means you are entering inside this dome. Okay. So when you heat the water, what, what happens? The water gets converted to vapor. Okay. Water gets converted to vapor. But whatever the vapor formed, okay, it contains some moisture particle. Okay, so whatever the vapor that is formed, it contains some moisture particle or liquid droplets. That's why it is called as weight stream. That's why it is called as weight stream. Okay, so inside this dome, what we have, we have weight stream. Okay, and once you once you once you heat this weight stream, it becomes the it becomes the dry stream. Try to understand. It becomes the dry stream. Are, are you able to get this thing or not? Let me know. Yeah. All of you. Are, are, are you able to get this thing or not? Or sh shall I explain it again? Yes, sir. See. Just, 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 just. What I will do, okay? I, I will just show you that again. See this. If you want somewhat uh, larger version, I will also draw that. Okay? See, let us see the TS diagram. Okay, simple. TS diagram for the water, let's say I need to plot. Okay? So we have shape somewhat like this. I will show you it by a different color. Okay. So see, okay. This, this is left-hand side of the dome. Okay. Similarly, we will have a right side of the dome. Okay. So this is the right-hand part of the dome. Try to understand. This is the right-hand part of the dome. Okay. Now see, when you, when you talk about the green region, in the green region, what we have, we have a liquid. Okay. We have a liquid. In the green region, we have a liquid. Okay. See, in the green region, we have liquid. Okay. Now, once we heat this liquid, what happens? Liquid gets converted into vapor. Okay. Liquid gets converted into vapor. Okay. But what happens? Whatever vapor is formed, whatever the vapor is formed, it contains some moisture particle. Okay. It contains some moisture particle. So, that means we are having the mixture of liquid plus vapor. Okay. 
So that's why we used to call that as a weight steam. Okay, I'll, I'll just show you that with a different color. That's why we used to call that as a weight steam. Okay, I'll, I'll just show you here. Okay, that's why the, the that liquid gets converted into liquid plus vapor. Okay, that's why this is called as weight steam. Liquid plus vapor is nothing but what? Weight steam, right? This is nothing but weight steam. I repeat, the liquid when you heat it, it gets converted into vapor. Okay, but whatever the vapor that is formed, it contains some moisture particle. Moisture particle. If you're getting confused with the, if you're getting, getting confused with the liquid word, okay, I will just write down here as a moisture. Okay, I'll just write down it as a moisture. Okay. This is a mixture of moisture plus vapor. Moisture plus vapor. That we used to call it as weight steam, right? Now see, once you heat the weight steam, what happens? Okay, whatever the moisture which is present in the weight steam gets removed. Okay, when you, when you heat this weight steam, what is weight steam? It, it's, it's a mixture of moisture and vapor. And when you heat it, what happens? This moisture gets removed. Okay, as a result, that steam becomes dry. Okay, so that steam becomes dry. So it will come out at point on this line. Okay, it comes out on this line. So weight steam, when you heat, it becomes dry. Okay, that means it doesn't contain any moisture. Okay, and when you further heat the dry steam, what happens? It becomes a superheated. Okay, it becomes superheated. It becomes superheated. Yeah, is that okay? Yes. Now is that okay? So superheated. एक बार और explain करो ना सर. Yes. Why, why why it is called as a superheated? Now now let's see. Let us take the example. Now atmospheric pressure. What is atmospheric pressure? One point zero one three bar. Try to understand. What is atmospheric pressure? One point zero one three bar. So at one atmospheric pressure that we used to call it as one point zero one three bar. Okay. The water will boil at hundred degrees Celsius. Is that okay? Water will boil at. 100 degrees Celsius because now atmospheric pressure is 1.013 bar. So if you take a water and if you start heating the water, water will begins to boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, but if you heat the water above 100 degrees Celsius, then steam is said to be superheated. Okay, so I'll just write down if if at 1.013 bar. If you heat the water above the hundred degree Celsius, the steam is said to be superheated because hundred degree Celsius it is called as a saturation temperature of the water corresponding to one atmospheric pressure. See, at one atmospheric pressure, water will boil at hundred degree Celsius. Okay, so when you heat the water at atmospheric pressure above the hundred degree Celsius. It is said to be superheated. What is about two bar? So if you heat it at two bar, okay, the water will not boil at hundred. Okay, it it will it will boil below or above the hundred. Okay, so for that we need to check the steam table. For that we need to check the steam table. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that okay or not? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Now see, what is superheated steam? Superheated steam is nothing but a dry steam only. Try to check. Superheated steam is nothing but a dry steam only. Because see, all of you, see if if, if uh, see this is very important. Now you should understand that. Okay. Otherwise things become then difficult. Okay. See here, all of you. See when you, when you calculate dryness fraction here on this line, dryness fraction here it is zero. Okay. The steam is zero percent dry. That means it's a complete liquid. See, on this green line, value of x is zero. That means steam is zero percent dry. Steam is zero percent dry. That means it's a pure liquid, right? So, but when you go on the right hand side of the dome, okay, you will get the value of x is equal to one. Okay, what is x is equal to one? At any point on the red line. The steam is hundred percent dry. See, that is nothing but a dry steam. The steam which doesn't contain any moisture, it is called as a dry steam. 
and where you will get a dry steam on the red line on the red line you will get a dry steam why because on the red line the value of dryness fraction is 1 that means steam is 100% dry okay now what happens inside the dome okay inside the dome okay inside the dome value of x okay it is either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to okay what i should write down here it is greater than or equal to 0 or it is less than or equal to 1 try to understand so in inside this inside inside the region what is the value of x it lies between 0 to 1 okay the dryness fraction will be greater than 0 and less than 1 okay because see when you, when you see this line on, on the left hand side line that is a green line value of x is 0 on the right hand side where the red line is there the value of x is 1 okay then what is about uh, see if, if i just draw some line like this okay I, i'll just simply draw a line like this here okay then how to determine the value of x here okay then what is the value of x here yes so value of x here will be between 0 to 1 okay yeah is that okay all of you yes is that okay is that yes, okay sir. all of you okay so see this is a background which i need to explain you okay before we, we start with the uh, ph and ts diagram okay now now just come back to the uh, ph diagram now see the first first process which we are plotting okay it is based on the condition that okay the theoretical vapor compression cycle with dry saturated vapor after the compression okay so see 1 to 2 is a compression you can see 1 to 2 is a compression which occurs in a compressor okay but after the compression after the compression that is at point number 2 i want the steam to be dry okay so that is the reason why the point number 2 is lying on this line or this curve okay because on this curve saturated vapor okay dry saturated vapor see i am this is not a steam basically it is a, it is a refrigerant so at at the point number 2 okay what condition we are getting we are we are getting it's a dry saturated so at point number 2 the vapor is dry saturated okay because one is the starting of the compression two is the ending of the compression okay so after the compression after the compression that is at point number two i want dry saturated vapor okay so that is the reason why i have taken the point number two on this line okay so point number two it is lying here right see this is a ph diagram so you are getting the curves like this when you talk about the ts diagram okay so ts diagram as you can see like this which i just you explained okay so it, it will be somewhat like this okay so the the, it, the total i am not plotting okay on the only left hand side and right hand side i am plotting okay so when you connect it it will be somewhat like this right yeah is that okay yes yeah let me know all of you is that okay yes see point number two point number two is a dry saturated so once it is compressed okay so after the compression it should be dry saturated vapor now see one to two one to two it, it is what it's a isentropic compression one to two is a isentropic compression okay so see isentropic isentropic will be a vertical line on a ts diagram okay you see if, if, if you want i will show you okay on this line okay if you measure the entropy on this line it is constant okay so when you see this line one to two one to two line is a constant entropy line if you want i'll just show you here also see one to two line is a constant entropy line see when, when you just extend this line okay so this is a constant entropy line okay so during one to two entropy is constant so you can see same on a ts diagram during one to two entropy is constant that is s1 is equal to x2 okay we want that compression to be isentropic isentropic compression in a compressor okay so meaning of isentropic it is nothing but adiabatic 
Okay, so we want that process to be adiabatic. Okay, that that means there should not be any heat transfer. There should not be any heat transfer. Okay, so this one to two, which occurs in a compressor, it is an isentropic process. Okay, that that is it is appearing as a straight line on the TS diagram. Okay, now see what happens. See from point number one, you you may go down like this. Okay, you may get point number two here. Okay, but we are not going down because it's a compression, so the temperature has to be increased. Okay, so when you move from point number one to point number two in upward direction, okay, the temperature increases, and that what we want in a compression. If you go down, what will happen? Temperature will decrease. Okay, so that is the reason why we are not moving from point number one. Okay, in a downward direction, so as to get point number two. Okay, why we are moving upward? Because see, when, see one two two one two two is a isentropy. So that means obviously one and point number two will be on a same vertical line. Okay, on T S diagram. Okay, now now the question will be whether to plot point number two above or below. Okay, now it is a compression. As it's a compression. Obviously, temperature will increase. So I am plotting the point number two here. That is, it is above the point number one. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, is that is is it okay with this one? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Is, is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Now see all of you. Now see what is important. Okay. So same, same like what we got in the pH diagram. Okay. Same like what we got in the pH diagram. See same thing what we got in a pH diagram. Okay. Same, same thing we have plotted on a TS diagram. So again, now on the TS diagram, if you can see, okay. So on the TS diagram again, we are getting a point number two, okay, as a dry saturated. So here also I will I will just show that point. Point number two is a dry saturated. See, try to understand the diagram, okay? Then then the problems becomes very simple. Same same point number two, it is on saturated vapor line, okay? When when you talk about the green line, it is a saturated liquid line. Red line is a saturated vapor line. So saturated vapor line. It is nothing but a dry saturated line. Same, it's a dry saturated. Okay. Now see, once it is getting out of the compressor, okay, where it is supplied, it is supplied to the condenser. Okay. So purpose of the condenser is to condensate. Okay. What is the purpose of the condenser? Is to condensate. Okay. So whatever the dry vapor which is present at the point number two, you can see what we have at point number two. We have a dry vapor. We have a dry vapor at point number two. Okay, so that we are passing into the condenser. So you can see two to three, it occurs in a condenser. So that vapor, when we pass it to the condenser, okay, so that vapor get condensed to what? At point number three, what we are getting? Can you can you let me know? At point number three, what we are getting? Let, let me know. At point number three, what we are getting? Yes. What do we have at point number three? All of you, see here it's a complete vapor at point number two. At point number three, it's a complete liquid. It's a pure liquid at point number three. See here it's a pure vapor. Here it's a pure liquid. Okay, so that also we can call it as a saturated liquid. Okay, so at point number three, what we have? Okay, it's a saturated liquid. It's a saturated liquid. At point number three, we have a saturated liquid. At point number two, we have a saturated vapor. If you want, I'll just write down here. It it is a saturated vapor. Saturated. Okay, vapor. Saturated vapor. Right. Similarly, at point number three, what we have? We have a saturated liquid. Saturated liquid. Okay. It's a saturated liquid. Okay, so see the vapor we have condensed to what we have condensed it to liquid. Try to understand. 
Here it was a saturated vapor. We have condensed it to what? Saturated liquid. So we, we got the liquid at the exit of the condenser. So you see at point number three, what we got? We got a liquid at the exit of the condenser. Okay, so this is the point number three. See, same, same process. We have plotted on a TS diagram. So two, two, three, two, two, three, as you can check. Okay, it, it is what? It's a constant pressure cooling in a condenser. Okay, because in condenser, when you see, the pressure remains constant. Okay, so pressure at point number two and pressure at point number three is same. As you can see, P2 is equal to P3 because see, P2 is the pressure at the inlet of the condenser. P3 is the pressure at the exit of the condenser. Okay, so obviously in the condenser, the pressure will remain constant. Because see, purpose of the condens uh, condenser is to condensate. Okay, that means he just need to change the phase. Okay, so condenser will only change the phase from liquid to vapor. Okay, it will not increase the pressure. It will not decrease the pressure. So during two to three, what happens? Pressure remains constant. Only the saturated vapor turns to saturated liquid. Okay, same process. You can plot it on a TS diagram. You can see point number two. It's a saturated liquid. Point number three, it's sorry. Point number two is a saturated vapor. Point number three, it's a saturated liquid. Okay, so see, saturated vapor we have converted to saturated liquid by using a condenser. So two to three, it occurs in a condenser where saturated vapor gets turned to saturated liquid. Simple, simple. What is saturated vapor? It's a dry vapor. Simply, if you want, I'll just write down saturated vapor. Saturated, I'll just write down here, dry or saturated vapor. Dry or saturated vapor. Okay, so, so dry or saturated vapor gets converted to liquid. Okay, so that is what occurs during condenser. And so again, see, what happens during condensation? Pressure as well as temperature remains constant. Okay, only we are, we are changing the phase. Only we are converting dry vapor to liquid. Okay, we are only we are converting dry vapor to liquid. What is about the pressure? Pressure we are keeping same. What is about temperature? Temperature also remains constant. Okay, so pressure it is constant. You can you will you will be able to see on a pH diagram. Temperature it is constant. You are able to see it on a TS diagram. Okay, that you, you will be able to see on a TS diagram. Yeah, is that okay with the process two to three? Let me know. Yes. Is that okay, all of you? Yes. Yeah, I'm waiting for your response. Yes, sir. Okay. Now see. Now once see now at at point number three, what we have? We have liquid. Okay, that liquid, you can see on the schematic diagram as well, that liquid, it is passed to the capillary tube. You can see three, three is the inlet to the capillary tube. Okay, four is the exit to the capillary tube. Okay, so in the capillary tube, what happens? Okay, so capillary tube, in the capillary tube, throttling occurs. Okay, so see this process three to four, if you can see this process three to four, so process three to four, it is called as throttling process, if you want. Okay, so in capillary tube, what happens? In capillary tube, throttling occurs. So here also I'll just write down, it is capillary tube, or this is also known as throttling device. Okay, capillary tube, it is also known as throttling device. Okay, so see, three is the inlet to the capillary tube, four is the exit to the capillary tube. You can see, this is the capillary tube. Okay, so three is the inlet, four is the exit. So what happens in a capillary tube is, okay, the liquid gets expanded. Okay, so this liquid gets expanded and it becomes weight. Okay, as I told you, see here, it, see when you see the point number four, it is lying inside this dome. So obviously at point number four, so point number four is a weight. Okay, so when you talk about point number four, it's a weight. Point number four is a weight. Okay, it's a weight stream. 
weight steam weight vapor i will call now i will not i will call it as steam it's a weight vapor because when i call it as a steam it is related with the water okay now i am relating with the refrigerants okay so for refrigerants i will call this as a vapor only okay vapor of the refrigerant like that okay so at point number 4 it's a weight vapor at point number 4 what we have we have weight vapor see at point number 2 we have dry vapor that we have cooled so it becomes liquid okay and and see at point number 3 that is the exit of the condenser that is nothing but inlet to the throttling device okay so from where we will expand it in throttling what happens in throttling expansion occurs okay and that expansion occurs at a constant enthalpy so when you see the ph diagram enthalpy at point number 3 is same as enthalpy at point number 4 so you can see at at enthalpy at point number 3 and 4 they are same that is h3 and h4 they are same as you can see here enthalpy at point number 3 and enthalpy at point number 4 they are same okay that that is the only what is called as throttling device what is throttling device throttling device it is also known as isenthalpic if you want i'll just write down this term as isenthalpic okay so in the capillary tube which process occurs in capillary tube isenthalpic process occurs if you want i'll just show you here in the capillary tube okay isenthalpic process occurs okay that means from inlet to the exit of the capillary tube enthalpy remains constant enthalpy remains constant so same you have observed on the ph diagram same same thing you observed on the ph diagram from point number 3 to 4 enthalpy is constant it's a, it's a vertical line it's a vertical line on a ph scale that means enthalpy is constant okay let let us plot the same process on on a th diagram let us plot the same process on a th diagram okay so see when you when you see point number 3 and point number 4 on a th diagram so we are moving from point number 3 to point number 4 along this line okay so along this line at any point okay what happens is enthalpy is constant so if if you want okay at any point on this line okay h3 is equal to h4 okay see i'll just extend this line so at any point on this line enthalpy is constant that is h3 is equal to h4 try to understand this one so at any point on this line enthalpy is constant okay so we are moving from point number 3 to point number 4 along this line because along this line enthalpy is constant so we'll reach to where we'll reach to point number 4 so same you are observed okay so at point number 4 it's a weight because it is inside this dome see this is a dome this is the left hand side of the dome this is the right hand side of the dome and point number 4 it is inside the dome so same like that it's a weight steam or it's a weight vapor right it's a weight vapor so at point number 4 what we have we have weight vapor right now see once it is getting out of the capillary tube that is at point number 4 it is supplied to the evaporator you can see so point number 4 is the inlet to the evaporator point number 1 is the exit to the evaporator right so again in evaporator what happens pressure remains constant as well as temperature remains constant okay only only that vapor gets uh, only the liquid gets evaporated or what you can see the wet 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 vapor gets evaporated see at point number 4 what do we have we have wet vapor so this wet vapor when you supply inside a evaporator okay it gets further evaporated okay it gets evaporated and so as to reach point number 1 same you can observe here at point number 4 we have wet vapor okay so when we when we supply it to the evaporator that is at point number 4 okay what happens it gets evaporated so at point number 1 okay again what we are getting so at point number 1 again we are getting wet vapor see again at point number 1 okay what we are getting we are again getting a wet vapor you can see that we are getting a wet vapor okay but dryness fraction here at point number 1 it is greater than the dryness fraction at point number 4 see here here dryness fraction is 1 okay sorry x4 here dryness fraction is x4 here dryness fraction is x1 
So drainage section at point number one is obviously greater than the drainage section at point number four. Right? Is that okay? Because see, if, if you just see the line which is passing through this point number four, so see, you will get somewhat line like this, which is passing through point number four, right? This is the line which is passing through point number four. Okay, where you will have value x4. Okay. Similarly, we will have one more line, let's say, which is passing through point number one. Okay. So obviously, here value of x is x1. Value of x is x1. That is drainage section is one. Right. So obviously, drainage section here, that is the value of x1 is greater than x4. Because see, here, here value of x is zero, right? On this line, value of x is one. Okay. So obviously here it is greater as compared to this one, right? Is that okay? Yes. Is that okay or not? Let me know. Yes. Yes. Is that, is that okay with this one? Yes. Yes. Is there any doubt? Yeah. Because see here, drainage inspection is x4, and here on this line, drainage inspection is x1. Okay, so obviously x1 is greater than x4. See, obviously here the steam is wet in both the point, whether at point number four or at point number one, the steam is wet. Sorry, we have wet vapor. We have wet vapor. See, I, I will not call it as a steam. Okay, we have wet vapor. Okay, but at point number one. Okay, the vapor is more dry at point number one. The vapor is more dry as compared with the point number four. Okay, because at point number four, we have less value of dryness fraction as compared to point number one. See, because see, when you, when you talk about point number one, it is close to this line, okay, right hand side of the line. So when you, when you move on the right hand side, what happens? the steam becomes more and more dry. Okay. See here, when you move from left hand sides towards right hand side, okay. When you move from left hand sides towards right hand side, you can see here, here X is zero. Here we, a value of X will goes on increasing. Okay. As we move from left hand side to right hand side. Okay. So point number one, it is on the right hand side as compared to the point number four. Okay. So obviously, at point number one, the steam is said to be more dry or vapor, the, the, the vapor is more dry as compared with the point number four. Okay, the vapor is more dry as compared with the point number four. Okay, now see further, once we have it at point number one, again, it is compressed, okay, and this cycle repeats. And the cycle repeats, yeah. So is it, is it okay with this diagram, all of you? Have you understood this diagram? Yes. Have you drawn this diagram? Yeah. Are you able to understand this diagram? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now see, now let us go to the second case. Okay. In the second case, what we have after the compression, after the compression, that is at point number two, the steam is, uh, sorry, we have wet vapor. Okay. Okay. We have wet vapor. So, so see, I'll just show you that. So point number two, when you see this point number two, what we have, we have wet vapor. Because see here, when you just compare the pre with the previous diagram, the point number two was lying on the line. That's why it's a dry. What is about the second condition? In the second condition, the point number two is lying inside the dome. That's why it is wet. Okay. So this is the only change we have. Okay. So at point number two, the point number two, it is lying inside the dome. That's why the condition at point number two is the weight. Okay. So at point number two, the vapor is weight. Okay. So same you, you observed again, it is get uh, condensed, right? To saturated liquid. Then further it is expanded in a expansion device like capillary tube. So it becomes again weight. Okay. And further it is evaporated in the evaporator. Okay. So we'll reach to point number one. Okay. See, so rest of rest, rest of the everything will remain same. 
right? Rest of the everything will remain same. Okay, see, if you, if you want, okay, I'll just plot this. I'll just plot this point number. Okay, see, this, this is a TH, this is TS diagram. This is TH diagram, right? This is TS and this is TH. Is that okay? All of you, let me know. Yes, same you will observe here. Same you will observe here. So this is nothing but a weight. This is a weight region. Yeah. Is that okay, all of you? Yes. Is that okay? Is that okay with this one? Yes, sir. Yes. See, uh, initially I posted that uh, uh, TS and then PH. Okay, so if you want, what I will do is now I'll just <clears throat> let, let us bring this here. Okay, I'll just bring it here. So there will not be any confusion for that. Okay, let us bring it here. Right? Is that okay now? Will that be okay? No. Yeah. You can see that. Yes. Similar, similar thing. I'll do it here for this one. Right? pH and TS. Let, let us plot, plot that first. pH, I will plot it first. TS, I will, I will make it. Same here I'll do. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it immediately, not a problem. Okay. So now let us start with this one. Okay. So as I told you, okay, before, so when you talk about the point number two, okay, when you talk about the point number two, let us see this point number two, okay, where the steam is weights, okay, point number two. So point number two only will decide, okay, so whether it is a dry or whether it a, it is weight or whether it's a superheated. So when you see this point number two, so point number two indicates the, we have weight vapor. Okay, same, same you can see here, weight vapor here. So point number two indicates we have weight vapor after the compression and the entire cycle is same. When you talk about the entire cycle, entire cycle is same, yeah. So is there any doubt with the remaining cycle? Let me know. Is, is there any doubt with the remaining cycle? Only, only we are changing the location of point number two. Initially, it was lying on the curve. Now it is lying inside the curve. Okay. So if it is lying on the curve, see, if it is lying on the curve, then we have dry vapor. If it is lying on the curve, it is dry vapor. If it is lying inside the curve, it is a wet vapor. Okay, now, now let us check with the condition where, okay, the point number two, it is lying outside. It is outside the curve. Okay, so when you see this, okay, so see this all of you. All of you just see this point number two dash. Okay, just see this point number two. Okay, so point number two, it is lying outside the curve. So obviously it is super heated. Yeah, is that okay? It is superheated. See here, all of you. Then it is said to be superheated. See this point number two, it's a superheated, right? After the compression, it is superheated. See, first it, it was, it was dry. Okay. Then it is wet. Okay. Then it is superheated, right? Is that okay? Rest of the entire process will remain same. See after superheated. Okay. Again, we need to condense it to what? Saturated liquid. Then we need to expand in the capillary tube. Okay. Further, we need to supply it to the evaporator. Okay. So this is how the cycle repeats. Yeah. Is, that, is, is that okay? Yes. See here. But see, one, one major change, what you can observe here. Okay. Here, point number one was inside the weight region. Similarly, point number one, it was inside the weight region, but here you can see point number one, because see, I want the steam to, to be superheated. Okay. So if you want it to be superheated, initially it has to be dry. Okay. So point number one is what? Point number one is dry. 
until and unless you make it dry the steam be, will not be superheated the steam will not be superheated okay so here it is a vapor so see all of you i want the uh, at point number 2 to be vap superheated vapor so point number 2 it is lying on the right hand side of the dome okay so point number 2 it is lying on the right hand side of the dome that is superheated then it is supply to the condenser where it gets condensed to saturated liquid at point number 3 further it is expanded in a capillary tube so at point number 2 4 we will get a wet vapor see at point number 4 we will get a wet vapor and that wet vapor it is supplied to the evaporator so it gets dry because see here here it is superheated obviously here it has to be dry okay so when you check it here see here it it, it is it, it is required to be dry so before the dry it is wet you can see before the dry it is wet similarly before the wet obviously it is wet right before the wet it is wet only okay but when you see here here i want it to be superheated so before the superheated obviously it has to be dry is that okay yes let me know is that okay yes sir okay now now let us let us go to the next condition okay we should have a superheated vapor before the compression you can check okay so see here all of you the point number 1 was on the dry okay now when you when you check the point number 1 okay it is in the superheated region because what we want we want the vapor to be superheated before the compression so see point number 1 it is before the compression so at point number 1 we want it to be superheated that means point number 1 should lie point number 1 should lie on the right hand side of the curve okay so th this is a curve so point number 1 is lying on the right hand side of the curve so see at point number 1 we have already superheated okay we have superheated vapor okay and to this superheated vapor what we are doing we are just increasing its temperature okay so we are just increasing its temperature so at again point number 2 we have again superheated so at point number 1 it is it, it was superheated okay so we will we will compress it so again it will be superheated okay but in that case as you can see what i have observed is its temperature increases so during 1 to 2 okay that is during isentropic compression in a compressor okay its temperature increases so that is what occurs in a 1 to 2 okay so once it is compressed we will condense it to saturated liquid further we will expand in a capillary tube so it will be gets wet vapor and further it is supplied to the evaporator okay where it gets superheated yeah where it gets superheated so same same you can observe here 1 to 2 okay it is a isentropic compression in a compressor okay it is a isentropic compression in a compressor of superheated steam okay so that is 1 to 2 then 2 to 3 it, it it is a condensation which occurs in a condenser 3 to 4 okay it's a expansion in a capillary tube okay then 4 to 1 see you can see this 4 to 1 it's a evaporation in a evaporator Okay, so is that okay with this one? Yes. All of you, is that okay? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So this this is all this is all about the diagrams. Okay. So see, I I have told you all all the possible all the possibilities. I I I just told you. all the possibilities which might be there based on the based on the inlet condition based on the inlet condition and exit conditions of the compressor okay so in first case we have dry saturated vapor after the compression in second case we have wet vapor after the compression in third case we have superheated vapor after the compression and in fourth case we have superheated vapor before the compression we have superheated vapor before the compression is that okay yeah. is, is that okay with this one 
Yes. Yes, let me know. Okay, now see, now let, let us start with the analysis of this particular cycle. Okay, let us start with the analysis. Because see, why we are studying is the cycle is, we are supposed to analyze the cycle, that is, we are supposed to calculate the COP of the cycle. Okay, so I'll just write down analysis of the cycle. Analysis of the cycle. Okay, so let the cycle be any anyone. Okay, so it can be it can be either a first case, okay, that is dry saturated vapor after the compression or wet vapor after the compression or superheated vapor after the compression or superheated vapor before the compression. Okay, analysis will be the same. Analysis will be same. Okay, so see analysis. What do you understand by analysis? For analysis, okay, we need to calculate the COP. What is the analysis? Analysis means simple. We need to calculate COP. That is called as coefficient of performance. Okay, that is called as coefficient of performance. Okay, now how to calculate the coefficient of performance? All of you know. Okay, so coefficient of performance, it is given by desired effect. Okay, coefficient of performance is given by desired effect upon work input. Okay, work input, right? COP is given by desired effect upon work input, right? Now see, how, how what is the desired effect? Okay, why we are running this cycle? Okay, why we are running this cycle? Okay, so just by looking at the name of the cycle, you can only, will be, will be able to understand. Okay, it's a vapor compression refrigeration system. Okay, it's a vapor compression refrigeration system. That means, we want a refrigeration effect. Okay, in, in the cycle name only you can understand. Vapor compression refrigeration system. Okay, so what we want? We want a refrigeration effect. Okay, so I'll just write down here. Desired effect will be refrigeration. Desired effect will be refrigeration. Okay, we want a refrigeration, right? We want a refrigeration. Okay, and see, we will get a refrigeration effect. Okay, we, we will get a refrigeration effect at the expense of what? At the expense of work that is consumed by the compressor. You can see, see, we are able to, we are able to get the refrigeration effect. Why we are able to get that? Because we are, we are supplying the power to the compressor. We are supplying the, the power to the compressor. Okay. So we are supplying the power to the compressor. So I'll just write down here, divide by work consumed by the compressor, work consumed by the compressor, work consumed by the compressor, right? Work consumed by the compressor. Work consumed by the compressor. Okay, so see all of you. Now, let, let us start with the refrigeration. How to calculate refrigeration? Okay, now see, if, if I just go back to the diagram, okay, so, okay, as you can see here, refrigeration, so where refrigeration occurs? Refrigeration occurs in the evaporator. See, during, during the practical session, I, I told you, in the evaporator, what happens? Okay, I've shown you the tubes. I've shown you the tubes inside the evaporator. See, in general, we used to call that as a freezer, freezer. Freezer of your free, freeze, refrigerator. Freezer of your refrigerator. Okay, so that is nothing but evaporator. Okay, so in, in the, when you clearly observe the evaporator, okay, what we have, we have the refrigerant which is flowing through the evaporator. Okay, so in the evaporator, okay, what we get, we, we, we get a refrigeration effect. See, we, we get a refrigeration effect in the evaporator. Because what happens whatever the working fluid that is present, or what, whatever the refrigerant that is present in the evaporator. Okay, it gets evaporated. It gets evaporated. Okay, in the evaporator, it gets evaporated. 
generated in the evaporator right so as a result the refrigerant gets evaporated see what happens see in the evaporator in the evaporator we have the tubes in the evaporator what is there we have the tubes inside which the refrigerant is there inside which the refrigerant is there okay so what does it does it, it abstract the heat from the food atoms so when when that refrigerant abstracts the heat from the food atoms it gets evaporated the refrigerant gets evaporated what happen with the food food atoms it gets cooled okay it gets cooled that means we are getting the refrigeration effect okay we are getting the refrigeration effect we are in the evaporator okay so, so we are in the evaporator we are getting the refrigeration effect because refrigerant gets evaporated okay so see all of you how to how to determine that refrigeration effect okay so i'll, I'll just mention here okay so refrigeration effect refrigeration effect okay how to determine the refrigeration effect okay so see here all of you you see any diagram it doesn't matter okay so point number 4 is the inlet to the evaporator okay and point number 1 is the exit to the evaporator 4 is the inlet to the evaporator 1 is the exit to the evaporator see if you want i, I can also go with the ts diagram 4 is the inlet to the evaporator 1 is the exit to the evaporator right obviously exit to the evaporator it is inlet to the compressor right see exit to the evaporator it is inlet to the compressor okay so when you talk about point number 4 point number 4 it is the exit of the capillary tube that is nothing but inlet to the evaporator similarly point number 1 it is exit of the evaporator that is nothing but inlet to the compressor okay so when you when you just measure the enthalpy at point number 4 and enthalpy at point number 1 okay and when we take the difference between that okay so refrigeration effect it is nothing but difference between the enthalpy at point number 1 and enthalpy at point number 4 see you can see this 4 to 1 4 to 1 it's a evaporation 4 to 1 it's a evaporation so obviously as you, as you can as you can see on the ph diagram as you can see on the ph diagram h1 is greater than the h4 you can see h1 value of h1 is greater than the h4 because it's a ph diagram it's a ph diagram so value of h1 is greater than h4 okay so h1 minus h4 is a refrigeration effect because what happens in the, with the refrigerant it gets evaporated so when it gets evaporated temperature will increase from t4 to t1 you can see temperature got increased from t4 to t1 right so temperature is increased so obviously enthalpy enthalpy will increase right so enthalpy also got increased from t4 to t1 okay so t4 to t1 enthalpy got increased so we are taking h1 minus h4 so that is nothing but a refrigeration effect okay so this is a refrigeration effect simply just take the difference between the enthalpies at the exit of the evaporator and at the inlet of the evaporator so that will give you that will give you the refrigeration effect why because see what is h1 h1 is given by cp into t1 what is h4 it is given by cp into t4 right so obviously when fluid gets evaporated okay the temperature will increase that means t1 is greater than t4 right this value t1 is greater than t4 that's why i am taking h1 minus h4 yeah is that okay yeah is that okay or not yes sir let me know yeah see in in in, in very detailed term i am explaining you this thing okay why i taken h1 minus h4 because h1 is what it is cp into t1 what is h4 it is cp into t4 obviously t1 is greater than t4 you can see here you can see on the ts diagram t1 is greater than t4 so that's why i taken h1 minus h4 this is a refrigeration effect okay refrigeration effect okay now next term next term we should calculate what we should calculate the 
what is the power consumed by the compressor so i'll just write down here power consumed or supplied power consumed or supplied by or to the compressor okay how to calculate how much power is supplied or consumed by the compressor see when you see the process process 1 to 2 you can see the process 1 to 2 it's a compression process 1 to 2 is a isentropic compression which occurs in a compressor okay so same like same like what we have done for the refrigeration effect i will take the difference between the enthalpy at the exit of the compressor minus enthalpy at the inlet of the compressor so this will give me the power consumed or supplied to the compressor right is that okay see this is this i done it for evaporator see this i done it for what if you want i'll just write down here in the evaporator evaporator okay and this i done it for what compressor okay so now let us put the values now okay let us put the values now so cop is given by cop is given by okay refrigeration effect okay as you can see here okay it is h1 minus h4 right it is nothing but h1 minus h4 you can see okay it is h1 minus h4 divided by divided by h2 minus h1 divided by h2 and h1 right so this is how we can calculate this cop is how we can calculate cop right is that okay yes, simple formula we have started with the with the last formula that is cop for calculating cop we we require refrigeration effects and work consumed by the compressor so we have calculated that, those terms how we have calculated simply refrigeration effect we get it in the evaporator so we have just taken the difference between the enthalpy at the exit of the evaporator and enthalpy at the inlet of the evaporator similarly power consumed by the compressor how we calculated difference between the enthalpy at the exit of the compressor and at the inlet of the compressor okay so is that okay with this one yes sir is that okay yeah so this is all of you try to remember okay this is the schematic diagram this is a general diagram for the vapor compression refrigeration system okay and based on the different condition after the compressions okay we have we have seen the four cycles four different cycles we have seen first for dry saturated vapor after the compression second wet vapor after the compression third superheated vapor after the compression and fourth superheated vapor before the compression and at the last we have seen the analysis of the cycle so as to calculate the cop of the vcrs system that is vapor compression refrigeration system right now let us move to the next part okay now let us see the factors which basically affects the performance of the vcrs systems okay so now now we'll see what are the factors which affects the performance of the vapor compression refrigeration system okay now let us starts with the first that is the suction pressure suction pressure so see all of you suction pressure so see all of you the compressor is going to suck the working fluid right who will suck the compressor will suck okay so see all of you 1 2 3 4 okay i'll just write down here 1 2 3 4 okay it it's the before okay it's the before condition that is before before decreasing the suction pressure all of you see our original cycle is 1 2 3 4 this is our original cycle 1 2 3 4 it's our original cycle okay but what happens okay what happens in a <coughs> condenser okay or what happens in the evaporator is see all of you all of you try to see the cycle 1 2 3 4 and 4 1 2 3 and 4 it's a before condition before condition okay but when you talk about 1 2 dash 3 and 4 dash it's a after condition 
Okay, it's a after condition. Is that okay, all of you? Yes. See what happens. Its suction pressure or evaporator pressure decreases due to frictional resistance. Try to understand. See, we want we want that. We want all of you. All, all of you see the cycle. One, two, three, and four. This is our original cycle. One. Two, three, and four. This this is our original cycle. So from one, that is from dry, okay, that is from dry vapor. We will compress it to superheated vapor. Further, we will condense it to saturated liquid, and further it is expanded to wet vapor. So we will get at point number four, okay. But what happens is actually, actually, the suction pressure decreases due to friction, frictional resistance of the flow. of the refrigerants okay because whatever the uh, the refrigerant that is flowing okay it offers the frictional resistance for the flow see the refrigerant which is flowing it offers frictional resistance for the flow as a result see we want ideally to get to point number 4 all of you see this point we want it to be point number 4 but actually it is going to हेलो सर
Yes, all, all of you, am I audible now? Yes, am I audible now? Yes? Yes, sir, now you're audible. Yeah, yeah. Now, see, let me explain it again. See, the process one, two, two, when you see this one, two, three, four, see, one, two, three, four, as I told you, Okay, you can call this as ideal. Otherwise, if you call, if you are getting confused, you can call that as ideal. Okay, so let this be ideal. Okay, and when you talk about one dash, two dash, three, four dash, okay, it's the actual one. If you want, you can call that as a actual one. Okay, this this is actual. I'll call this as the actual. Okay, so let let us see about that. Okay, so see all of you here. See one. Two, three, four. It's our ideal cycle. But what happens due to the resistance which is offered by the flow of the refrigerant? Due to the resistance which is offered by the flow of the refrigerant, instead of expanding from three to four, we are expanding from three to four dash. We are expanding from three to four dash. So see, as like what we have done for four to one. Similarly, from four dash, okay, I will draw a horizontal line as like four to one, okay. So, so this horizontal line will intersect, okay, the this curve at point one dash. See, instead of expanding from three to four, we are expanding from three to four dash, okay, and from four dash we will draw a horizontal line, okay, which will cut the right hand part of the curve okay same like what we have done here from four we have drawn a horizontal line which is cutting this curve at point number one similarly from four dash we'll draw a horizontal line which is cutting this curve at point number one dash okay now from one dash obviously we need to reach it to what same exit pressure of the compressor okay so from one dash we will compress it to point number two dash Okay, so that means we are able to reach it to same compression pressure as that for one, two, three, and four, right? So is that okay with this one? Yes. Is that okay with this one? Yes. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. See, by doing this, what happens? All of you see. All of you see. Initially, 
Initially, the refrigeration effect was H1 minus H H1 minus H4. Okay, what was the initial initial refrigeration effect? Initially, refrigeration effect was H1 minus H4. This was initially ref, initial refrigeration effect. Okay, refrigeration effect that is H1 minus H4. This was the initial refrigeration effect. Okay, but due to due to lowering the suction pressure, what happens? refrigeration effect becomes refrigeration effect becomes h1 dash minus h4 dash h1 dash minus h4 dash you can see initially the refrigeration effect was h1 minus h4 okay but due to lowering the suction pressure what happens the refrigeration effect becomes h1 dash minus h4 dash Okay, and what happens? This refrigeration effect get decrease. See, by lowering the suction pressure, what happens? Refrigeration effect get decreased. Okay, all of you, you can you can see this one. Okay, so by doing this, what happens? Refrigeration effect decreases. Okay, so this H one minus H four dash. What is this? It's a refrigeration effect. Okay, so when you when you lower the lower the suction pressure what happens with the refrigeration effect refrigeration effect decreases refrigeration effect decreases is that okay yes what happens with the refrigeration effect refrigeration effect decreases is that okay yes yes sir okay so i'll just mention here by by see by decreasing by decreasing the suction pressure by decreasing the suction pressure by decreasing the suction pressure refrigeration effect decreases refrigeration effect okay decreases what happens with the refrigeration effect it decreases yeah is that okay <laughs> Yes. yes is that sir. okay yes okay so what i will do okay so refrigeration if effect decreases okay that means okay whatever the refrigeration effect okay the refrigeration effect initially was h1 minus h4 now it becomes h1 dash minus h4 dash okay so we got the value of h1 dash minus h4 dash okay see just just give me a minute <laughs> So what I will do, I'll just write down this in a detail. I'll just write down this in a detail. Okay. So by decreasing the suction pressure, what happens? The refrigeration effect get decreases. Okay, refrigeration effect decreases. Okay, and what happens with the work input? All of you see here. What happens with the work input? Initially, work input was one to two. Now it got increased from one dash to two dash. So it it decrease by decreasing the suction pressure, refrigeration effect decreases. But what happens? Work input for the compressor increases. I'll just also write down work input for the compressor. Work input for compressor. Work input for the compressor increases whatever the work input that was required for the compressor increases yeah is that okay all of you because initially it was requiring only one to two now it is requiring from what one dash to two dash right now it is requiring one dash to two dash yeah is that okay yes Yes, sir. Yeah, is that okay? Okay, so if you want, I'll just write down this in a detail. Okay, after that, I will just share this in a detail. Okay, so now, now let us move to the next point. Okay, now let us move to the next point. Okay, and that is what? <clears throat> okay, now let us move to the next process. That is 
effect of discharge pressure as you can see the effect of discharge pressure okay now now let us try to understand with this one okay let us now try to understand with the <clears throat> what is given okay so our initial cycle our initial cycle is 1 2 3 4 okay what is our initial cycle our initial cycle is 1 2 3 4 if you want here only i'll just write down here 1 2 Three, four. Okay, it's a ideal cycle. Okay, and rest of the everything they are actual, actual. Okay, so one, two, three, four. You can see one, two, three, four. Okay, it's the ideal one. Okay, but again, again, due to the resistance that is offered by the flow of the refrigerant, what happens? discharge pressure also increases see what happens suction pressure decreases you can see suction pressure decreases okay initially suction pressure was p1 it got decreased to p1 dash and what happens with the discharge pressure discharge pressure increases initially it was p2 it got increased to p2 dash okay so initially we used to compress from 1 to 2 initially we used to compress from 1 to 2 but we now we, actually we are compressing it from 1 to 2 dash actually we are compressing it to 1 to 2 dash okay so 1 to 2 it's ideal 1 to 2 dash it's actual because due to the resistance which is offered by the flow of the refrigerant okay what happens is discharge pressure also increases so discharge pressure got increased from 2 to 2 dash okay now see from 2 to 3 we used to draw horizontal line okay so from 2 we used to draw horizontal line which will cut the left hand part of the curve at point number 3 okay so similarly i have done it from 2 dash i have drawn a horizontal line which will cut the left hand part of the curve at point number 3 dash okay so we got point number 3 dash next from point number 3 we are moving vertically downward till point number 4 similar thing i done it from 3 dash i am moving vertically downward till i will get point number 4 dash okay again from 4 to 1 we are moving on a horizontal direction similarly from 4 dash to 1 i am moving on a horizontal direction so this is how i got the actual cycle 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 they are the ideal one what is actual actually it is 1 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash how i got it see from 1 to 2 i used to compress it ideally but what happens due to the friction resistance offered due to the flow of the refrigerant what happens <clears throat> we we are able to we are able to get more discharge pressure okay so in, in instead of compressing from 1 to 2 we are compressing it from 1 to 2 dash it gets compressed from 1 to 2 dash so from 2 to 3 okay i used to draw horizontal line from 2 i used to draw horizontal line which will cut the curve at point number 3 similarly from 2 dash i draw a horizontal line which is cutting the curve at point number 3 dash okay so i got point number 3 dash from point number 3 i used to draw vertical line till point number 4 similarly from point number 3 dash i draw vertical line till point number 4 4 dash okay from point number 4 i used to draw horizontal line okay which will cut the right hand part part of the curve at point number 1 similarly from 4 dash i draw a horizontal line which will cut the right hand part of the curve at the point number 1 it is same as 1 dash so this is how the cycle works okay now by doing this what happens again if you observe okay so by by increasing the suction pressure by increasing the suction pressure okay see suction pressure by increasing the suction pressure what happens with the refrigeration effect understand 
initially the refrigeration effect was h1 minus h4 initially the refrigeration effect was h1 minus h4 now it is h1 minus h4 dash yes now it is h1 minus h4 dash so what happens refrigeration effect decreases so refrigeration effect decreases so refrigeration effect decreased okay refrigeration effect decreases because initially it was h1 minus h4 now it is h1 minus h4 dash so obviously h1 minus h4 dash it is less as compared to h1 minus h4 right so refrigeration effect decreases and what happens with the work supply to the compressor again it got increase initially it was 1 to 2 okay but now it is 1 to 2 dash so obviously for 1 to 2 dash more work input is required for the compressor okay so work input for the compressor increases work input for the compressor increases is that okay yes let me know is that okay with this one is that okay with this one all of you have understood yes sir okay now see now now let us see the next thing okay effect of superheating okay what, what happens with the superheating try to understand okay so see our initial cycle as i told you it's a 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 it's the initial cycle okay so now i will superheat it okay i will superheat it so my point 1 becomes 1 dash and 2 becomes 2 dash try to understand point 1 becomes 1 dash and 2 becomes 2 dash so by doing this okay can any, any, anybody let me know yes what, what happens by doing this okay so by superheating i'll just write down here by superheating what happens what by superheating what happened can can anybody let me know by superheating what happened see initially initially it was initially it was one two three four initially it was one two three four now i superheated it so the point number two become one becomes one dash okay so as point one becomes one dash okay obviously two becomes two dash because obviously okay when you superheat okay you are moving on the right hand part part of the curve you are moving on the right hand part of the curve so as one becomes one dash two becomes two dash so by doing this as you can observe okay in, initially the refrigeration effect was h1 minus h4 initially the refrigeration effect was h1 minus h4 but now the refrigeration effect becomes h1 dash minus h4 okay so what happens refrigeration effect increases refrigeration effect increases refrigeration effect increases by superheating the refrigeration effect increased okay so see when you when you just see this delta delta term so this much refrigeration effect is increased see when, when you talk it initially initially the refrigeration effect was h1 minus h4 now it is h1 dash minus h4 so obviously the refrigeration effect is increased okay but you are getting this increased refrigeration effect okay you are getting the increased refrigeration effect at the expense of what at the expense of what work in work that is supplied to the compressor because initially you used to supply how much you used to supply okay h2 minus h1 you used to supply h2 minus h1 but now you're supposed to supply h2 dash minus h1 dash initially only h2 minus h1 was required initially only h2 minus h1 was required right now now h2 dash minus h1 dash is required obviously the work required in h2 h2 dash minus h1 dash is more so refrigeration effect is increased okay and work input work input is also increased work input for the compressor also increases 
work input for the compressor increases. Is that okay? Let me know that. Is that okay with this one or not? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So see, I'll just uh, erase this part. Okay. So initially, refrigeration effect was H1 minus H4. Now, the refrigeration effect is H1 dash minus H4. So obviously, okay. So initial term was only this part. Okay, only this one. Initially, it was only this one. Now, it is this much, right? So refrigeration effect is increased. Okay. But this refrigeration effect is increased. Okay. At the expense of what? At the expense of work that is supplied to the compressor. So initially, we used to supply only this much amount of work. As you can see, initially, we used to supply only this much amount of work to the compressor. Now, we need to supply, okay, now we need to supply this much amount of work to the compressor. Okay, now we need to supply this much amount of work to the compressor. So obviously, work input is also increased. Work input is also increased. Okay, so refrigeration effect you will get, but at the expense of what? At the expense of work input supplied to the compressor. So more refrigeration effect you will get by supplying more power to the compressor. By supplying more power to the compressor. Is that okay? Yes. Is that okay? Let me know. Okay, so. So now let us start with the next one. Okay, by, by sub-pooling, by, by the sub-pooling of, <coughs> okay, so see all of you. Our initial cycle is one, two, three, four, right? Our initial cycle is one, two, three, four, right? Now see, we, we will sub-pool it, okay? So when you, when, you, when you talk about the point number three dash, it is sub-cooled, okay? When you talk about point number three, it is sub-cooled because at point number two, sorry, at point number three, what we have? We have saturated liquid. At point number three, we have saturated liquid. Okay. So see, instead of, instead of condensing only to the saturated liquid, we will condense it to sub-cooled liquid. Okay. We will condense it to sub-cooled liquid. Okay. So if you want, I will just write down in detail at point number three, it's a subcooled liquid, sir. Subcooled liquid. Okay. Now, when you have a liquid, when you have a liquid below its saturation temperature, it is said to be subcooled. I don't understand. When you have a liquid below its saturation temperature, it is said to be subcooled. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Simple. Simple. All of you. If, if you give me the example, now atmospheric pressure is one bar. Now atmospheric pressure is one bar. So now, now in the atmospheric condition, the water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, the water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. So if you heat the water below the 100 degrees Celsius, okay, it is, it is said to be subcooled. Yeah. So whatever the temperature of the water below below the hundred degrees Celsius, it is said to be subcooled. Yeah. Is that okay? Is that okay or not? All of you, one atmospheric now. What now? What is the pressure? Now pressure is one atmospheric pressure. Okay. So if you heat the water, what happens? What ha happens? So temperature of the water will goes on increasing so temperature of the water will goes on increasing once it once it reaches 200 degrees celsius okay it will gets converted into vapor okay so after the 100 degrees celsius it is super heated before the 100 degrees celsius okay it is what you can call that to be sub sub cool okay that you can call that as sub is that okay yes let me know so point number three dash is a sub cool okay see here all of you Instead of, instead of cooling from 2 to 3, I am cooling from 2 to 3 dash. Instead of cooling from 2 to 3, I am cooling from 2 to 3 dash. You can see that. 2 to 3 dash I am cooling, right? 
so three dash is a sub cool okay so as like three to four i will i will expand from three dash to four you can see instead of three to four we will expand from three dash to four okay so as to reach okay at the same pressure okay so as to reach at the same pressure okay now from four to one as i connected i will also connect from four dash to one all of you all of you see here one two two it is same then instead of cooling from two to three i will cool it from two to three dash you can see i, I will cool it from two to three dash now i got point number three dash okay which is basically the sub cooled now as like three to four i will expand from three dash to four dash i will expand from three dash to four dash and as like four to one okay i will move from four dash to one i will move from four dash to one right i will move from four dash to one right so by doing this okay so by sub cooling what happens let us see okay can anybody let me know by sub cooling what happens by sub cooling what happens can anybody let me know yes can anybody let me know what happens by sub cooling what happens work with the refrigerant work input for compressor decreases let let us let us let us first comment on the refrigeration effect what happens with the refrigeration effect initially initially it was h1 minus h4 now it is h1 minus h4 dash right so refrigeration effect increases are you agree to this one initially it was h1 minus h4 now it is h1 minus h4 dash so refrigeration effect increases okay but what happen what happens with the work input for the compressor okay some of you have have asked me something right so work input for the compressor can anybody let me know what happens to it what happens with the work input to the compressor you can check it one to two it is same na is same right work input for the compressor is same is that okay yes yes sir because see we have same process one to two we don't have one to two dash we don't have one to two dash our process is only one to two yeah is that okay so see we are getting we are getting more refrigeration effect with the same work input okay so we found this uh, sub cooling okay sub cooling to be more efficient in comparison with the super heating because see whether it's a super heating whether it's a sub cooling in both the cases refrigeration effect is increased you can check that in both the cases what happened with the refrigeration effect it is increased you can check in both the cases the refrigeration effect is increased but in super heating when you observe okay work input is increased okay but in the sub cooling work input is same okay so what 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 we used to find we used to find okay we used to find the sub cooling to be more efficient this sub cooling it is more efficient than super heating because with the same work input we are getting more refrigeration effect with the same work input we are getting more refrigeration effect is that okay is that okay with this one is there any doubt see when you when you decrease the suction pressure okay refrigeration effect decreases so it, it it is not useful when you increase the discharge pressure again refrigeration effect decreases so it, it is again not useful okay then what is useful it's it's by superheating and by sub cooling so when you superheat it after the compression okay what happens refrigeration effect increases but but what happens with the work input for the compressor it also increases similarly when you when you sub cool it what happens refrigeration effect increases but what happened with the work input for the compressor it is constant okay 
it is same so we found this sub subcooling to be more efficient than the superheating okay now now we, we are moving to the last part that is called as actual cycle okay that is called as actual cycle now now when you see the the ideal cycle okay when you see the ideal cycle ideal cycle you can pick any any one of the ideal cycle if you want okay i'll just pick any one of the ideal cycle out of all what we have seen okay let us let us pick any one let us pick any one okay let let me pick uh, one of the ideal cycle uh, <coughs> ideal cycle okay i will pick one of the ideal cycle okay so okay let, let, let us pick this one super heated steel okay let, let us pick this side let us pick this cycle okay let let us try to understand this ts okay i'll just pick this cycle i'll just okay just for the sake of your comparison okay see th this is a pressure and enthalpy diagram uh, for the <clears throat> what you can call this as a okay i'll, I'll just pick this one okay then things becomes very easy. okay let us let us let us understand with the ts diagram only not to get confused with the ph see this is ts diagram for the actual cycle this is for the ideal cycle okay see I, ideal see this uh, ideal cycle okay we 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 have seen four cases out of that i have just taken one case okay now let us compare it this with, with this one okay now what what difference you observe here okay between ideal and actual okay let, let us try to see the processes okay let us try to see the processes okay so So see what, what all of you will do now. We will see this actual cycle in the next uh, session, okay, in more detail, okay, and we will also also take the problem based on this, right? Because now due to the time constraint, we are just uh, concluding this session today, okay, and in the next session we will see the actual cycle. If you have any doubt or difficulty, you can just let me know, okay. Otherwise, we can conclude the session and we will continue. the actual cycle and the problems which are based on the simple vapor compression system in the next session okay so see all of you what what i need to see uh share with you is you can see now okay so what we have seen today we have seen the simple vapor compression system in the today session just okay see here all of you we have seen simple system on ph and ts diagram okay then we have seen the analysis of the cycle then we have seen the factors affecting the performance of the cycle okay and in the next lecture we will see the actual cycle okay followed by numerical based on the wafer refrigeration system okay that is standard wafer compression refrigeration system by using ph chart and refrigeration table okay so this new actual cycle and numerical we will cover in in a next session is that okay all of you yes, yes sir. sir okay so with this we will uh, conclude the today session and in the next session uh, we will continue with the actual cycle and the numerical based on vapor compression refrigeration system